Now, the judgment that you might feel when you go inside the gym, that can feel negative. And I've had that. We've all had that when we first go inside the gym. Men and women lifting more than me. They look way more confident. And we'll get little, you know, blips in our, let's call it, journey that we feel a little bit, or people are going to be watching me. Let me tell you the truth. No one in that gym is staring at you and judging you. In the nicest possible way, they don't give a shit about you. And nor do you of them. Just like you for them, you probably care about their well-being. Are they safe? Are they working hard? You might gawp at them between a set as you're filling your water bottle up and, you know, changing the weight on the bar. But ultimately, you're in there for you and they're in there for them. They couldn't give a toss what you're doing. They might stare at you while they're walking from machine to machine like I do. In all fairness, I probably go up and stare at every single human being inside the gym, but I don't actually look at them. Does that make sense? I'm looking at their, their skeleton. Does that make sense? I'm not looking at what they're doing. I'm not looking at how they do things. I don't spend any time watching them just like you do for them. You are in there for you. And I know it's all cliche. You're in there for you. You're working on you. But that is the truth. You walk through those doors. You get the job done. You're in there for 60 minutes. You tick the box, you walk out again. It is simple as that. I hope that helped. Let me know if it did. I'm just offering advice where I can. All right, Jenny? Have a lovely day and I'll speak to you soon. All right? YouTube. Hello. Sorry. That was just a little voice note I just sent to a client. Uh, she checked in this morning and we've been conflabbing ever since. Um, and hey, if you listened in on that, we all struggle with judgment inside a gym, don't we? A little bit. Um, I have in the past, but hey, we're, in, we're, we're doing this for ourselves. And if we can support other people whilst we're doing that and big each other up uh, and support each other, that's what counts. Welcome to episode numero dos of Endgame. Uh, we are going to class this as a QA and a style video and I'm going to take you through my day, a bit of training. I'm actually going to whiz off. I've done my cardio this morning already. I'm going to whiz off and go to the supermarché and get some veggies. I'm in the supermarket at least two or three times a week, just replenishing the greens in the bottom trays of the fridge. Uh, and I will be answering all of your questions that I popped up on an Instagram Q&A that I'll be answering on here. So enjoy. Okay, uh, currently sat outside of a hospital. Please refrain from asking me as to why. Let's kick this off with question numero uno. Um, right, okay, so top six Pokemon. Uh, number one, I'm going with Ditto. Uh, come on now, because is it Ditto? Uh, he can just mimic other Pokemon. Number one, Ditto. Number two, Slowpoke. Is that the one where, the, you know, the big chunky one with the, with the big tongue and he licks you and you go to sleep? So I've got one that mimics Pokemon, another one that sends you to sleep. Third, I would go Mr. Mime, the one that mimes. Uh, and he will just build boxes of nothing and make you feel as if you are trapped, but you're not. And then I'll go for Mew, Mewtwo, and Pikachu. That is my top six. You're done in. I've won already. Um, favorite things to listen to in the gym. Favorite things to listen to inside the gym. Uh, I really, really enjoy listening to gaming and movie scores, like gaming music. Uh, like the theme tracks to games like World of Warcraft or Halo or Gears of War or Assassin's Creed, uh, God of War, things of that nature. Lots of fighting and guns and battles. Uh, Call of Duty is a good one as well. Um, and also from movies like Gladiator and Avatar and Lord of the Rings and the Avengers and Marvel movies and things such as Spider-Man, Iron Man and Thor. I like listening to that sort of music. Why? It makes me feel as if I'm in a scene from a movie. Or I'm in a game with a sword and I'm about to go to battle with a, with a bad ogre man. Um, I quite like that because it puts me in like a scene and I quite like it. I love watching movies and like playing games. So I quite, I'm very nerdy like that, as you already know. Um, so I quite, like, I quite like listening to that sort of, those sort of tunes. As you can see, I'm at my favourite supermarché. It's not, if you can see the logo behind me, I don't know. It's not my favourite. But because the dates are so short in this place, the food goes off really bloody quickly i don't mind because i have the stomach of 70 cows in a tiny field and i go through vegetables like there is no tomorrow i come in here and get my greens and my frozen berries and things like that like mushrooms and green beans and spinach and asparagus and broccoli and 
all the veggies that I eat, greens particularly. I don't really eat many, very many colours. The only coloured food I'll have is like a, like a pepper in a fajita mix if I do make that, you know? Like a bell pepper, like a red one. Um, but yeah, gonna jump in here, grab some veggies. I feel a bit. Okay, cup of tea. In my Marauders map, I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good mug to all the Potter fans out there. Uh, what tea am I drinking? If you happen to give a rat's ass, I'm drinking the biscuit tea. You know, is it Twinings or Yorkshire tea? They do a biscuit and a strawberry jam flavor and I think a nutmeg one. Anyway, biscuit tea, couple of drops of gingerbread biscuit, skinny food drops and three sweeteners. So very, very sweet, tastes like a biscuit, tastes like a dessert and when on prep, tastes as if I'm eating something and technically I am not consuming any calories, which is superb, apart from the Almondo milk, which is probably burnt off whilst I'm taking a poop. So, next question um, is, cha-ching, are you happy with prep so far and have you changed anything yet? Yes, things have changed twice on two occasions. I'm not gonna run through each of the changes, I'm just gonna show you where we are at now and what I'm having to do now and those changes were made yesterday okay so you've just joined me on my second change through prep i'm going to pop it up up on the screen now so please keep up i'm going to run through my training day my non-training days they are different in terms of diet dietary requirements why because my my body on a training day compared to a non-training day is demanded differently i'm training on a training day i'm not on a non-training day when i'm resting i typically just do my steady state cardio which is now at 60 minutes it was at 45 but changed yesterday up to 60 minutes on the stairmaster with a step target of 10,000 steps a day so yes i'm still working on a rest day but my muscles aren't my body isn't under, under as much load as it would do on a training day. So my foods are a little bit lower in terms of calories and carbohydrates. So please keep up, let's read it together. So meal number one is two whole eggs and 300 grams of egg whites. With that, I just make a big old omelet. I chuck a load of vegetables in there like sweet corn, which I bought early and some peas. I pop some green beans on top. I chop up some onions and some mushrooms. So I volumize the meal. So it's not just egg whites and two whole eggs. So I like to keep myself full and give my body what it needs, some greens and some good stuff, okay? Meal number two, which is a pre-workout meal. I typically situate this around about an hour to an hour and a half, 90 minutes before I train, and that is 50 grams of whey, 100 grams of oats, and 100 grams of berries, okay? I usually typically go for frozen. Pre, pre-workout, I'll usually I'd have like a, a non-stim pre-workout, maybe a black coffee. I don't really go for stimulant-based pre-workouts because I'm so wired as it is, you know me as a person by now. I'm so zing. As soon as I have a pre-workout that has a ton of caffeine in it, I then crash and come into a dip. And I don't want that before I train. I wanna be up top, okay? Um, during, our tra during, during training, some EAAs, some creatine, and I chug back on a load of water. Super easy. Uh, Post-workout is almost identical to the pre-workout though it is cream of rice, creamy rice, uh, rather than oats, okay? So 50 grams of whey, 100 grams of cream of rice, and 100 grams of berries, again. I can have berries or pineapple. I typically go for, for berries. Uh, meal number four, 200 grams of chicken breast. That is at raw weight, which I've worked out to be at 140, 135 to 140 at cooked. So that's chicken breast and 75 now changed, it's now changed to 70. In red, as you can see, the it was at 100 grams of dry rice, dry weight rice, it's now at 75. So I used to have about 240 cooked, it's now at 180, okay? So we've reduced that. And my just before I go to sleep at night time, I'll have a little bowl again of chicken and nut butter, and I just mix it, I whack it in the microwave, I whack some cinnamon over the top, I know that's really wacky, but I have chicken, cinnamon, and nut butter, and it goes down a treat before I go to bed. And I'll have a little jelly and a little um, 30 calorie hot chocolate to top it off. That is my training days. We'll work down through our non-training day, so it's rested. Uh, again, it's very, very similar in terms of brekkie. So first meal, I'll have three whole eggs, so a bit more fats, and I will have 200 grams of egg whites rather than 300. My next meal, 
200 grams of, of, of beef mince, this is at raw weight, and 50 grams of rice or 60 grams of pasta. Again, 200 grams of chicken breast, 50 rice or 60 pasta. 200 salmon for tea time for my last meal. And then before I go to bed, technically my last meal now, is some yogurt, some whey, some berries, and nut butter. Alexa, volume two. Sorry. Uh, sorry about the constant wardrobe change. I am currently naked. Why? I'm in my humble abode. I quite like and enjoy feeling, feeling free uh, and feeling my tackle bounce up against my inner thigh as I run up and down the stairs. It makes me feel flamboyant. Next question. I'm 25 and bad knees. What subs should I take? Why in God's name are you thinking about supplements, pills, concoctions and powders before fixing your hardware? Why are you looking at a quick fix? WTF are you doing? Okay. I'm suffering with patella tendonitis. Why? Uh, well, at the late age of 29, I rushed through the take your time process of chucking weight on the bar and just heavily loaded my legs too quickly. So my tendons and my ligaments couldn't, they didn't have enough time to catch up on the weight I was putting on my body because I was impatient and I wanted to build big legs and now I'm suffering okay I can't run up and down the stairs without a little bit of knee niggling pain I'm sorting that out now because I'm, I've sourced the issue I found the underlying problem okay I visited an osteopath I spoke to a sports massage therapist you know get an MRI scan visit a reliable source google some stuff find out what's wrong with your knees stop looking at supplements I don't care what any supplement company says to you that they can fix this sort this out support this bollocks mate I've tried every Every supplement out there to fix my knees is done nothing. When you have actual pain, hardware issue on your body, not one supplement out there will fix it, okay? It'll supply your body with the necessary things to help support and repair uh, your, your knees and, and, and joints, but it's not gonna fix it. You gotta find out a problem, fix the underlying issue through wall sits I have to do, like isometric holds. I have to I have to perform total knee extensions where you wrap a band around the back of your knee and, and warm up that, that kneecap. I have to take my time with warming up before my leg days. You've got to find out the issue, stop looking for a quick fix. You've got a problem with the hardware on your body, no drink is gonna fix that. That's enough from me. Do you remember that I mentioned that I was going to go and watch the new Doctor Strange? at the pictures, at the cinema. Well, I did. And that was a 10 out of 10. The most mind-boggling, strangest, Doctor Strange, movie that I've ever seen, Marvel-wise. And it was classed as like their first horror. And no doubt they did very, very well. Loved it. Couldn't recommend enough. Now, there are scenes on that movie that you don't want to have taken any mushrooms prior to watching that movie. You need to go with the same mind and also take a big pee before you go in because you don't want to miss a second of that because I had to go for a wee, come back, and I was like, uh, what? What just happened? You know when you need a wee halfway for a movie, you kind of try and time it right, don't you? You're like, hmm, this seems like a quiet scene. I'm going to run for a pee. And God forbid you need a poo. No way. Okay, uh, second question. Let me try and get this camera off the fence. I'll be back with you in a sec. Okay, next question. What games are playing at the moment. Some of these questions, your punctuation or grammar is terrible. What games am I playing at the moment? Funny enough, funny you ask, I've just downloaded an emulator, which for those who do not know, it is almost software on your phone to replicate the software on old gaming consoles, such as Game Boys. So I've just downloaded that today and uh, Set, set it up on my phone. I'm now playing Pokemon Fire Red. So I've just picked out of my three options, Charmander, Bulbasaur, or Squirtle. And for those that know, it is the most nerve-wracking experience of your entire childhood, and still was for me today in my adult years. And I picked Bulbasaur, because I've never picked the, uh, that baby before, so I did that today. Other games, I jump on Fortnite on the Xbox. I'm playing Crash Bandicoot uh, Team Crash Racing at the moment. I jump on Spyro now and again. And I'm actually setting up my PC, my gaming PC, to potentially, when I get a little bit deeper into prep and I need to sort of take my mind off of being hungry and my energy levels are getting a bit sapped and I've finished work and I've ticked all the boxes, I can jump on World of Warcraft. Um, 
which I was heavily addicted to as a child. Next question. I'm not going to take you through uh, the whole workout. That's not what I'm here. I will drop you in like little droplets, droplets of rabbit poo as I work through my training session with some questions. Go to cheat meal. Now this isn't even diet dependent. This is whenever. A meal of my choice, if I wanted one, it'll be a delicate, sumptuous cheese board selection with cold meats, a warmed baguette of some bread, some nice crunchy rolls. I'm thinking, you know, we could range from anywhere from a stinky blue cheese to a, a warmed camembert with some caramelized onion chutney. There's a, there's a brand called Snowdonia actually, and they come in like wheels of cheese. Yay big. And there's different ones like Black Bomber, Red Mist, ginger, like a, an amber one, which is ginger, black pepper, a green one, which is a garlicky cheese. My good God. Yeah, I'm looking at a cheese board. Uh, over anything else, over a pizza, over burger and fries. That's for the, that's for the, that's for the peasants. Uh, next question. Must do's for building muscle. Can you see my muscle here? I don't know whether you can. I don't know. There's Ethel there, isn't there? Uh, must do's for building muscle. Three things in my opinion. Rest is number one. Your body must find time to actually spend time to build muscle rather than digesting food, rather than being stimulated inside the gym. Okay, and being battered and being beaten up to a pulp your body needs to rest so it has time to build. That's number one. Number two, you need to consume more energy than what your body needs to currently sustain its current body weight at. You need to supply it a surplus. You need to supply it more energy for your body to go, oh, hang on a minute. Oh, so he's demanded more from me inside the gym. Awesome. So now I need to consume more calories. If you don't, if you don't have that spare bit of energy around, floating about, your body's not gonna use it. So number one, rest. Number two, consume more than what your body currently needs to sustain its current body weight at. And number three, stimulate. Be inside the gym, progressively beat your numbers. You've got to get stronger. You've got to actually challenge your body, challenge your muscle. If you don't challenge, you won't change. Simple as that. Rest, stimulate, and surplus. All right? Cha-ching. Oh. Just got to try and limit the rocking as best you can. Right, should we uh, go into another question? Should we? Yeah, Matt, please ask us another question. Uh, or answer another question, rather. Uh, why is cream of rice, C-O-R, if you're in the know and you're really cool, like this person clearly is, that stands for cream of rice, and I'll get to what it is in a second, such a popular food choice for bodybuilding. It's become super hyped up recently. Uh, I don't know why, because it's been around for years um, but things come around right trends come and come and go um, it's simply cream of rice for those that don't know is simply a product it's ground down white rice very finely ground down and you can mix it with hot water cold water in a microwave or a boiling water from a kettle you mix it up super quick and it's almost like a very thin rice pudding consistency yeah really good on digestion that's probably why it's become very popular, or it did for bodybuilders because the amount of calories they have to eat. And now you see bikini competitors that consume 1,500 calories that got our cream of rice. It's because it's all hyped up and people fucking love it and it's all branded and it's all really fucking cool. So you have to eat it, right? But if people find oatmeal quite hard to digest, rice is really good for digestion. It doesn't really bog you down or sit in your stomach for too long. It's quick and easy, it gets in your bloodstream, bang, ready for training, all right? So it's great. Don't follow the hype. Try it, of course. Spend your money on the stuff. If you don't like it, you don't have to have it. You're not not cool if you don't eat cream of rice. Please. All right. I've just managed to do, you can see that machine there in the middle. It's like a, a very low row. Well, you pull low and it sits really high up into your traps. Uh, I had to do that with no straps, which in all fairness, I didn't do too badly. But now I've got to, uh, I've got to row 70 kilo dumbbells, which is going to be a challenge in itself, gripping the fucking things. Um, because the size of the handle is pretty girthy. So we're gonna give it a go. 
I'll warm up with no straps and then I'm gonna head to reception see if they've got any spares in lost property. Get in. And a lot, uh, many of you are gonna be like, but what about the grip that you will be building from not using wraps? The benefits I will get from moving the weight with some assistance to help with my grip far surpasses what I really want grip-wise. Of course, a great grip would be, um, would be fantastic, but when I go on stage, oh, wrong way around. When I go on stage, um, unfortunately, the judge's criteria, there's not one box that they tick going, that man has great grip, because I'm sure there's no way of, for them to judge my grip. Apart from if I, you know, jumped off the stand, whipped down their pants and... But we won't go there, all right? So I'm now going to row with a set of 70 kilo dumbbells. That is no doubt as heavy as many of you watching. One dumbbell in my hand. I'm basically rowing your nan. This is pretty substantial for me. I can't see you, so hopefully you can see me. Um, keeping my back straight. Uh, sitting into my knees, sinking a bit of weight into my body and my lower back. Keep my back nice and straight as possible getting a nice stretch and pulling through my mid back into my lower lat area, okay? So take a look, I'm doing eight reps. Okie dokies. Thanks. Okay, nice. On to my left side. Oof. 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 Lovely. Voila. Without any edits, without any clipping, I'm gonna show you my last set of the workout. And this is a double rest pause. So I've explained a rest pause in previous videos and a rest pause is you simply complete a set, you wait a moment, then you repeat it again. Yeah? For as many reps as you possibly can with the same weight. This time I'm doing a double. So what that means is I complete 15 plus reps with the weight given. I rest for 15 to 20. I then repeat for as many as I can, rest for 15 to 20, repeat again three times in total. All right, let's give it a go. This is a bastard and this hurts a great deal. Fifteen. Rest. Are you gonna rest with me? I'm not gonna skip this on. You're gonna watch me rest. It's good to actually be invited into what it actually looks like rather than clipping it all up just to try and speed up the video so you're more entertained. It's nice to actually see what I do between sets. Usually I don't talk. Three, two, one. As many as I can. That's failure. I can't do another rep without assistance. Or we'll herky jerky the waiter. I'll wait. Got one more round. Eight. Nine. 
10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 2, 1, let's go. Done. Cut the scene. Come out of it. Physique's changing. Physique's changing on a weekly. This is good. Okay, a little bit windy and it's just started raining, fantastic. Just wanted to touch on a quick topic of being aware of your surroundings, aware of other people's feelings, okay, when we're inside the gym. Now as physique competitors, bodybuilders, we are quite addicted to taking a look at our bodies, our physical state on a frequent basis, perhaps every single day, uh, once we've finished our training. Now some gyms might have private studios and facilities and little rooms that we can head off into the corner, take our gear off, hit some poses, gear back on, and we scoot. Some gyms may not. They might have fitness rooms and studios. Now, take a take a have a have a take a take a moment to think about those rooms might attract the timid of customer, the quieter, the ones that aren't too confident with being in the main gym environment. They'll head off to that area and take a bit of kit. They might head over there to do a little bit of stretching. Just what I saw then. So I just headed into that room before I posed, and I saw a young lady, a girl hitting some stretches. She was working out, she was hitting some abs. So I walked in, the first thing I did was I acknowledged her and I said, hello. And I said, would you mind me just sitting in the corner and filming myself? You won't be on camera at all. I do apologize, it might look a little bit weird, but I just wanted to let you know rather than just whipping it out. And she was like, absolutely, that's absolutely fine. I clarified with her, I was being polite. I was aware of her feelings and the surroundings and the people around me. We sometimes, as bodybuilders, get a bit too bolshy take our gear off, Rawr, flex, Rawr, we're monsters. Absolutely not, okay? That's no reason to not care about other people around you. Take a moment, look at your surroundings, and care about others, okay? Be polite, it's well worth it. Hello, monsieur and mademoiselle. Uh, I'm gonna finish the video here, but before I do, I'm gonna answer two questions. Uh, why am I finishing the video here? Well, I need to eat, I'm sweaty, and I stink. That's enough of a reason. Do you think you'll find prep as hard as last time? Absolutely not. I've done it before, and I think that in itself that I've done it before. When I reach moments in prep like hunger, that doesn't even bother me anyway, or cravings don't really bother me anyway, but the, the, the lack of energy or the 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 just constant draggy feeling that you will get. I've hit it before, I'll be like, well, I've, I've had that, I know how that feels, that's easy, easy money. Um, I think that in itself and having the right people around you, uh, the right support network, the right people that really give a crap, matters. Last but not least, what is your honest reaction to lame excuses? <laughs> oh, that's basically it. That's, my, that, that, that's the reaction. No, um, I might giggle. Um, at the dog ate my own work crap. Um, but I, I, I sigh. I go, oh, what a shame. It's a shame that people have to use these excuses. I couldn't do my cardio because, I couldn't get my steps in because, I couldn't eat my meals because, or, you know, I'm tired. It, sometimes, and I hate to say it, it all boils down to how bad you want it. It really does. It's priority. If I said to you, okay, simple as this, you will receive 10 million pounds in one year, in 12 months, if you do exactly as I say. If you do every cardio session, if you train a certain way, and you eat exactly as I tell you, for 12 months, you will receive 10 million pounds. What will you do? You'll spend every waking moment of every single day working towards that and thinking about your, that goal, that present. Okay, that trophy at the end of 12 months. You'll do everything, nothing will stand in your way. Why? Because that prize means something. It's that shiny, 
it's you, it's you want it that bad, okay? And to us, and to a lot of us, the stage, the goal, the holiday, the wedding, the whatever it is we set ourselves on is worth 10 million quid to us. It is as simple as that. Why people go, why do you have a chocolate bar? It's, I don't want it because I want that. That is my goal. The chocolate bar is fucking nothing to do with my goal. I couldn't give a fuck about the chocolate bar. I want a 10 million quid. Simple as that. I'm going off on one now. Oh, I need to take my inhaler. Um, anyway, I'm going to leave you at that. Thank you very much for watching episode numero dos of Endgame. Please hit the subscribe button down below. Like, comment, share. Whack it on your Instagram and tag me in it when you're watching it on your big telly, whatever you might do. I hope you, in you enjoyed that uh, episode. I'm going to leave you to it. I'm actually going to edit this now. I'm going to have a shower, wash my pits and my... And uh, I will see you in the next episode. Episode numero tres of Endgame. Ta-ra!